So Canada invited a Nazi into Parliament and didn't just give one standing ovation. They gave two in front of, but also included, Vladimir Zelensky in that standing ovation. So Zelensky applauded a Nazi. All of Parliament applauded a Nazi, awarded him a hero. That's a real thing, and I'm still trying to cope and really wrap my brain around that. So much so that I've made stickers to remind myself daily that I did not see that coming. Link is down in the description below. These are the stickers. They're awesome. They're selling out very fast. But more importantly, the House Speaker, who was the person who invited the Nazi, has resigned. So now Canada is going through this whole kind of makeshift thing of how do we replace a House Speaker? This is kind of the first time this has ever happened where a Speaker has had to resign because of this big of a fuck up. So we're going to take a look at the candidates and we're going to take a look at the next fuck up because these candidates are not good. Like Canada is not in a good position to have another Speaker. All of the candidates are really bad, and I feel like I, Mr. Sunshine Baby, could do a way better job of being the House Speaker. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I want to encourage you to give a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. You're going to want to stick around for the entire thing because the Green Party's uh, leader, Elizabeth May, has a complete meltdown, and she's actually one of the candidates for a House Speaker position. So... Canada's just so messed up. It, 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 it's a clown show. And that's probably why the entire world is interested in our politics because it's entertaining, but it's also when you drive by like a car accident, you slow down because you want to see what's happening, the destruction out of sheer curiosity. And that's what's happening with Canada. Everyone, everyone around the world is watching Canada literally burn, literally, and also, yeah, Literally, just just literally, Canada's burning down to the ground. So without further ado, let's get into this video here. Who's in, who's out, and everything you need to know about the speaker election. So the most important thing is the candidates. This right here, he has been the interim speaker. He's the backup, the deputy speaker, right? So this guy right here, he's a conservative MP from the East Coast, who to beat a bad guy. That's how I always announce the East Coast. And he's been doing a fantastic job. He usually does Fridays when Anthony Rhoda wouldn't be there. Deputy speaker has been doing a fantastic job. He's a conservative. Now let's take a look at who we have next. The unhinged NDP. Carol Hughes rises statements in the House of Commons April 14th, 2021. She's unfortunately a candidate. She's been an assistant and deputy speaker since 2015. She's thrown her hat into the ring. Now, let's take a look at this guy right here. Liberal MP Greg Fergus. Let's let's see what he has to say because he actually made a statement in Parliament announcing uh, his interest in running for the House Speaker. Yes, I am. I'm going to let my name stand, and uh, along with uh, some of the other great candidates in Parliament. What do you think needs to change? Well, I think uh, we should. I think, how do I put this? The importance of the rights, and the rules, and traditions of the House that allow to encourage frank, passionate debates, but within a framework of, uh, of making sure that we can talk to each other. Because each one of the 338 members of Parliament have a right to be in the House to express themselves and not to be intimidated and to make sure that they can freely express themselves. We're working as much as we can with all, all parties, uh, but mostly the opposition parties, to see if there's an opportunity that we can, 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 can get the speakership. It's something that um, has only happened a very few times. But I think the indication is right now that uh, you know we're we're working the right direction. Well, I, I think there has to be some more decorum in the in, in the house, some more respect for one another. Um, I think we have to you know completely look at how uh, the individual made it into the into the gallery and how how it was missed, um, so that it doesn't happen again. Uh, but but ultimately, you have to have a, a personal relationship with all of the members of the House of Commons. Uh, have an understanding of, of what their needs and wants are, because the speaker the speaker is serving the members. It's not the spe the members serving the speaker. Right. So right now you're seeing a liberal speaker who went down on his sword for inviting a Nazi, and every other party, the Conservatives, the NDP. The Green Party, everyone's trying to throw their hat into the ring and see who can get that seat. Now, whoever has that seat, whatever party has that seat, 
it doesn't really provide more power to them. You just have a speaker that has a little bit more of a bias. That's my understanding of it. Liberal speaker, Anthony Rhoda, he definitely was harder on the conservatives and the oppositions more so than the liberals. And so if you have a conservative speaker, well, the roles are a little bit reversed. But for the first time ever, we're actually probably going to see a very weird change in who the speaker is because the really more most important person we're going to focus on right now is this woman right here, Elizabeth May. She's the leader of the green party. The green party has like two seats or something. They're, they're not, not popular at all. They're, they have like 3% or 4% of the votes. They are the smallest of small parties in the house of commons. And well, She's not necessarily a very good candidate unless you want somebody to drink a lot of booze and be unhinged. Well, then if that's the case, she would be an excellent candidate. Let's look at her interests here uh, from quite a few years ago. And then we're going to look at a more recent speech that she gave on stage where she just has a complete meltdown. Interest me. It would be wrong to say it's interested me for a very long time. There is an attraction, I think, in a minority parliament to having a speaker who represents a party not in power. I, I, the, the partisanship around the role of speaker is a, is a worrying thing, but the, the things that would make a good speaker are a thorough understanding of parliamentary rules and procedures uh, and a willingness to be completely nonpartisan. Now, if those are two important criteria, I would suit both of those for sure, and I think most members of parliament know that I am uh, less partisan, certainly, than most members of parliament, certainly <laughs> more nonpartisan than any other party leader, and that I want parliament to work because I love the institution and I respect our institutions and want to see them elevated uh, and not degraded. As far as I'm concerned, if elected speaker, obviously one can't be party leader. Of course it interests me, but it, I have a long <laughs> decision tree, if you can imagine, you know, if this, then that, and if this, then that, and is it time for me to be, you know, do we launch a leadership succession plan now? Do we give it six months in case there's a snap election? And I haven't made the decision yet. So it be it would be a false answer to tell you I wasn't interested, but it would be equally wrong to say, this is what I've decided. I'm going to go for it. And what better time now than when the House Speaker resigns over a massive controversy? Now we're going to take a look at Elizabeth May's completely unhinged speech. This is what you're going to want to share. You're going to want to share this video to Facebook, Facebook groups, because this person may be the next House Speaker of Canada. And I'm going to explain why I think that's the biggest possibility after we watch this video. And none of us are elected to be dictator. Sorry, Stephen. The thing is, our parliamentary democracy is all of us are equal. But the thing is, I'm the only woman party leader. And I know what men immediately think. Because the poor boys, they really bought into Freud. That whole sexual maturation thing on the Freudian scale that we go from the oral, I'm not going to eat the mic, into the anal. God, I don't want to think about it. Or the genital. Guys get stuck on this Freudian stuff. So they immediately assume that I'm envious of the things the boys have that I don't have. They assume that I suffer from classical Freudian debate envy. But I no longer do. Praise the Lord free at last. I am not suffering from debate envy because, thanks to a few of the boys, I get to be in the debates. Yes, it will be fun. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. And I am happy to say we are all equal and we get to participate as equals. So that's that on that. But you know what? I have a completely deranged and not, there is no sequitur. This is a non sequitur. Do you guys ever wake up with old theme songs? from former black and white TV shows that you never thought your kids would ever see and they're running through your head. Like every now and then I wake up thinking about, Lisa, you've got to wait. Lisa, I wake up thinking about a horse is a horse, of course, of course. This morning I wake up thinking this. Why am I thinking this? Do you guys wonder? 
Hang on. She's trying to kick her off stage. Wait, this you know is what? so embarrassing. Do you guys remember the theme song? Welcome back. Who knew Cotter was spelled K H A D R? Welcome back, Omer Cotter. It matters to say it. Welcome back, Omer Cotter. You're home. Does it strike you? There's a lot unusual about your speech, Liz, but we're going to take off. Omar Khadri, you've got more class than the whole fucking cabinet. Thank you. Omar Khadri is somebody who got caught up in what would be deemed as terrorist activities against Canadians and Americans and then was awarded 10 something million dollars i believe that's that that's the case uh i think a lot of there's a lot of um casualties from americans and canadians due to omar cotter's uh involvement in what he did and then was awarded a massive financial compensation allegedly well he, he wasn't allegedly awarded the compensation i'm trying to be careful of how I word things because it's a very tricky situation. So that's a class act. Elizabeth May, she's the party leader for the Green Party. Now, here's why I think that she might actually be the next House Speaker because Jesse Trudeau has proven time and time again, more and more recently, it seems to be a snowball effect that as time goes on, you constantly have to outdo the last woke thing that you did. And Trudeau has proven how woke he is and how woke he wants Canada to be. And he's very proud of his cabinet, the liberal cabinet, to be handpicked diversity hires, not for their skills. No, no, no. You don't get a job in government based off of your skill level. You get a job in government to fill quotas. People of color, indigenous people, women. And Justin Trudeau has made a point that he's so proud that around 50% of his liberal cabinet is women. Not necessarily because of their skill level, but because Justin Trudeau goes after the woke higher diversity quota. And so here's why I think that Elizabeth May will be the next House Speaker. There already is a woman speaker, so they've already got that quota, but they don't have a Green Party minority, like the smallest of small, like the tiniest pea or the grain of rice as a House Speaker. And that's why I think that Trudeau is going to hand pick her because it's going to look good. Also, he's going to be able to extend his coalition beyond the NDP, which is the third or fourth. I don't know if the block is bigger, if the NDP is bigger, but in order of popularity, Unfortunately, it goes liberal, conservatives, either block or NDP, and then the, the Green Party and independent, which is like one person, right, who stands in a corner and waits an hour to ask one question. And so I think that Justin Trudeau is going to try and make a point that you, it doesn't matter if you're a woman, it doesn't matter if you're a small minority party, everyone has equal opportunity which is something that he likes to say, I guess, in Canada, in, in Parliament. And I think that it was going to be a massive woke push to make Elizabeth May the next House Speaker. Also, having somebody like Elizabeth May who gives those types of speeches, right, and who can be completely unhinged, is going to take a lot of pressure off of Justin Trudeau and all of his controversies because he's just going to kind of rely on Elizabeth to do her thing and then all the spotlight is going to be on her and he'll be able to do all of his dark, woke crap in the background, in the shadows. That's the reason why I think Elizabeth May is going to be the next House Speaker, but out of the options that I've listed, I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments. Do you think it would be Elizabeth? Do you think it could be somebody else? I'd love to know what you guys think. We have one more option. And this guy is, well, he's not very popular among what Jordan Peterson has to say. Canada's new Speaker, the actual interim Speaker, who's elected right now, but until they do an election, uh, is a separatist. You can't make this country up. So this is an article from the National Post. A block MP is about to be the shortest lived speaker uh, of the House in Canadian history. 
Clay Minden, who was first elected in 1984 as a PC, brushes off concerns over a separatist acting as speaker in the House. There, um, there are people of all opinions. It's a unique situation in the history of Confederation, he said in an interview. At the same time, it's an additional experience for me in my 39 years of political life. Playmenden was chosen by all House leaders to serve as temporary basis after former Anthony, former Speaker Anthony Rota resigned for honoring a man who later turned out to have served in a Nazi SS unit during the Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's address in Parliament last week. Rota's mandate officially ended on Wednesday. MPs had to temporarily fill the role of Speaker in order to make sure that Parliament could continue its work without interruption. So you have a separatist, you have a black liberal MP who's running, which he also might get that position because I don't think that there is a person of color who is or has ever been House Speaker, but maybe somebody in the comments can fact check me. Or you have Elizabeth May who's unhinged and just gives completely uh, insane speeches and she will be the center of controversy for the next long time, allowing Justin Trudeau to sneak in bills, sneak in legislation and do what he does best, be a slimy cockroach in the backgrounds while other people take the spotlight of class clown. So Canada's in a very fragile state and it's not looking good. I really, really, really think that they're going to go the other route of having a serious House Speaker and go with somebody who can gather all the spotlight, all the headlines, all the media attention, and be the center of attention. And I just, I don't see how Canada is going to ever fix itself. Like, this is a horrible, horrible situation. If she does become House Speaker, it would take a massive controversy, like inviting a Nazi into the house and awarding them with, uh, you know, as a hero status for her to resign or something of that similar status. And uh, it's just not looking good for Canada and in our parliament. So that's why you should subscribe and turn post notifications on because this shit show is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's here to stay. Unfortunately, as long as we can see what's happening on the internet, because Justin Trudeau has also censored that. So yeah. As long as um, we can see the deck of cards, why not play them? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. Please consider going down in the description or the pinned comment below to get your I did not see that sticker. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video. If you want to support the channel financially, you can do so by checking out the merch shop linked right up there. Or if you want to do something for free, which is also absolutely acceptable and highly encouraged, you can subscribe right there. If you want to continue watching videos like this, you can do so by clicking or tapping right there to watch the next upcoming video. And if you want to watch a little bit of different content, but also Canadian stuff, you can do so by clicking right up there. That's my second channel, House of Canada, also known as the House of Commons Highlights. Thank Thanks so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.